Hello everyone and welcome back to a professional match of StarCraft 2. Today it's time for a Terran versus Protoss where we find ourselves on the map 2000 Atmospheres. Now, I don't know who ends up winning this particular game, but from what I've heard, apparently this match is a bit of a banger. I mean, you've probably already seen the title and the thumbnail of this video, right? So small spoiler alert. Uh, what I know about this game is that there's gonna be like big capital ships on both sides, and they're gonna, like, face off against each other. It should be interesting. Playing with the blue Terran SCVs in the top right hand corner from Poland, we're looking at Sol's main command center, and the opponent, playing with the, the red Protoss probes, we are looking at Gung Fu Bandas' main... or, no, Gung Fu Bandas. It, it doesn't end with an S logo. Gung Fu Bandas' main nexus. He's, of course, from Germany. So, Poland going up against Germany. Interestingly enough, there's a couple of countries that seem to be really good at StarCraft 2 overall, right? You have guys like, for example, Raynor and Sero. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's I'm sure there's other players from Italy and Finland that are really good at the game too. Uh, but in general, they're kind of like head and shoulders above the rest. When it comes to like Poland, for example, though, we have guys like Elazer that come to mind, Mana, uh, I believe Geralt as well, of course, Geralt, uh, and then also Christianer. He's also a really strong Protoss player. There's like a bunch of players that are really good from that country. And the same, of course, for Germany as well. Uh, we have Hero Marine, Lambo, Showtime, and I guess Gung Fu would be fourth in that list. But there's no denying that both Poland and Germany are really good game. I don't know why. South Koreans are pretty good too, if, you know, if, if I've heard correctly. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure, man. We'll find out. Anyways, apparently Gung Fu right here is gonna go for that a low ground wall off that is very popular these days. For a long time, we saw Protoss players going for the structures right over here on the top of the little ledge to prevent the Reaper from going up. Uh, but apparently that's kind of fallen out of favor. Soul not even opening up with a Reaper here. Although, eh, the probe is still hanging out on the left side. Nah, I think he's just gonna go check here in just a second. He just wants to uh, poke in once more. I was gonna say, if this is gonna be a cheeky little opener, that would be fun, but so far, I wouldn't be surprised if everything it's just gonna be A-OK, -okay. especially with the Nexus finishing up very soon. Protoss is gonna have plenty of supply as it is. Second pylon ended up going down right here inside of the main base. Now with the Cybercore finishing, we should see the tech root fairly, fairly soon. Mm, is it gonna be... Okay, is he saving up until he can make a Stargate? I guess so. Oh no, okay, so he does start up a Twilight Council. Interesting. That Twilight started at like 150 gas. <laughs> I guess he doesn't really do, uh, I, I guess he doesn't really need to rush it out, but... In general, faster is better. That's where she... No, that's... Mm -hmm. Anyways, <laughs> in the meantime, on the other side of the map, uh, we have uh, the Terra player going, of course, for the classical 1-1-1. So it's a barracks first, into a command center on the low ground, then into a factory, and eventually a starport as well. First, the has already made its way across. It's gonna be able to shade away relatively easily. It's gonna be that Widow Mine opener. So yesterday I ended up casting uh, a Terran versus Protoss as well. In that particular series, we saw uh, Clem opening up with quite a few of those Hellions, but apparently Sol has decided to go for the Widow Mine variant, or the variant instead. Okay, what was? Oh, sure. I don't think you want to let these units in, but a little bit of a misplay here and there. A little bit late on the Twilight Council, and then the depot is down. So when it comes to like. Top level StarCraft 2 on the European server. Yeah, now he's kind of stuck though, so was that really worth it? I mean, he's got two kills. It's fine. When it comes to like top level StarCraft on the European server, there's like the upper echelons of StarCraft 2, right? Where there's, there's a few that are like head and shoulders above the rest. It's actually kind of funny. Like, sometimes I see people asking like, Hey, Loco, do you want to face off against like, I don't know, Hero Marine in a best of seven series, right? Um, sure, I would like to, but the thing is, you guys are gonna watch me get absolutely demolished. <laughs> when it comes to, like, the top-of-the-line guys, they are still hundreds of MMR above players that I cast regularly on this channel as it is, right? So it's, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. Like, even at the, the pro-level tier, there's still a significant difference in skill level. Either way, a little bit of a skill check right here coming in. Widow Mines are, oh god, are going into the, okay, uh, Good pull, good pull. I was a little bit concerned there for a second. Still gonna try and just uh, be as annoying as possible though. Yeah, forcing the Protoss to lose as much mining time as he possibly can. Yeah, so already this is so much damage that's being done. Observer is out right now and eventually he's gonna be able to continue mining, but needs to be so careful he doesn't lose anything critical. Ay, 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 ay. All right. 
Two workers end up going down. Two workers end up going down there. Eventually, Gung Fu is going to be able to get back to his, uh, his master plan, but that was... Hundreds of minerals going down right there in potential loss mining time. But then... Uh, da, da. You know what I mean? I just need to commentate this game in action sounds right now. Um, losing the medevac, completely unnecessary. A little bit sloppy as a matter of fact. Either way, Marines are marching across the map. There's even a... Th <laughs> Wait, what? A Thor drop? Really? Oh god, are we gonna have a Thor drop? I mean, that's a lot of marines. They're hiding behind- Is it a Okay, it's a Thor drop. Sure. Let's get across the map, see how it goes. Uh, Thor drops is something we saw back in Wings of Liberty. It's not really- it's not really popular anymore these days. Blink is done at this point though, but here comes the Thor! <laughs> Couple of SCVs are still here too, so they're not gonna be able to use uh, their repair ability. Okay. Uh, uh, why? Okay. Anyways, you can do a lot of micro, of course, with the medevac. Five probes end up going down here so far, but now with two medevacs less than I think this army should have had. Ooh, dude, the repair is really strong, though. The repair is really strong. <laughs> I don't know exactly how many stalkers you need to, like, out DPS a healed up Thor. This guy has five kills. Now, nah, okay. eventually it'll all be cleaned up, and obviously those SCVs will also... There he is, dude. Look at Steve. Floating to the surface of 2,000 Atmos. Um, eventually, obviously, the SCVs get killed too, so in the end, it's a relatively even trade. But that was a, a fun little start. Kung Fu, if you blink, you can grab those units for free, I think, my man. Eh, now it's maybe a little far. Okay, yeah. Get the tank, at least. Okay, good. Gets the tank. Second tank on the high ground. Third tank now also rolling down the ramp. Probably won't be able to get too much done here. Oh, well, he decides to go into the main base anyway. Siege tank is pretty far back, will be picked off eventually. SCVs were pulled there, but a little too late. Okay, there you go. All right, that was much better. Colossus follow up right now as well from Gung Fu. So he's gonna go for that uh, Blink Stalker opener into Colossus. Obviously, disruptors are a common follow-up as well, and now he's adding on an explosion of gateways. Six of them end up going down right here, powered by just one pylon. I wouldn't mind seeing, like, a secondary pylon here in a little bit, just to make sure that, you know, not everything gets unpowered. There you go. Alright, good. Yeah, this is obviously gonna allow him to make a ton of units. Already, he's at three bases, obviously, and at this point, the, the Terran player, I mean, he's got the third command center done, but it's not landed just yet. He's oversaturating the natural for now. I don't think there's going to be a whole lot though, that the Protoss can do to prevent this third from landing. I mean, there's probably a Colossus out at this point, but yeah, there's two of them as a matter of fact. Um, second one just finishing up, but usually this is the moment where Protoss is forced to sit back a little bit. You can obviously keep that, uh, that Stalker ball out there for a little while longer, because they're pretty mobile and obviously you can yeah, poke and prod here for a little bit. But in general, the big heavy hitters, they're going to have to stay at home for a little while longer. No extended thermal lens just yet here for the Protoss player. Um, Gung Fu has the resources for it. There's like a few sloppy moves in this game. Uh, so there's a, a ranged upgrade for the Colossus that makes them significantly better. For some reason, it's not researched yet. Especially with... Like, usually you start it with, like, the first Colossus. So, like... All right, I guess he really just wants to uh, grab the maximum amount of units. I'm assuming it's not a mistake, but I don't know. Anyways. High Templar coming up as well, just to morph them into Archons. And this is going to be a pretty powerful attack if he decides to go for it. I mean, obviously, if you don't spend the money here on the upgrades, you can grab yourself more units. It's just going to make this push a lot more all in -y. Okay, gets the medevac, gets the free units as well. What a messy game so far. <laughs> Five pylons have been started up as well though, so Gung Fu definitely is planning on getting aggressive here. There you go, charge is obviously done. This is a scary force. 
No, I guess he's on purpose not getting the extended thermal lens. Feels like a no-brainer to me if you make three of these colossi, but... Okay, a little bit of friendly fire being done right here as well on those SCVs by the siege tanks. Scan right here reveals that Gung Fu is still marching around a little bit, trying to get some work done. Stargate comes up. Dark Shrine also comes up. Fourth Nexus at this point, pretty much fully saturated other than the gases. He's gonna go into Immortals at this point. Alright. So already we have a couple of these ghosts available as well. Soul's gonna sit back here for the time being, just trying to secure his own fourth command center. We'll probably morph that one into a planetary fortress. Relatively passive game so far though. From really both of them, right? I mean Gung Fu obviously was looking to do a lot of damage there, but not really getting that much done. Now it's also gonna be uh there's the ex <laughs> There's the extended thermal lens, okay. That is so weird. I don't understand why that upgrade is so late. Maybe it's a, a... Like, I've been thinking about it for a little bit here while casting the game, which is probably not the best moment to think about it, but... It seems like maybe this is a recent development. I'm thinking back of the games that I that I casted yesterday. These siege tanks are dealing a lot of friendly fire. Um, I'm thinking back of the games I casted yesterday. I'm pretty sure... Parton got his upgrades a little bit quicker, right? <laughs> he always has to. Either way, Dark Shrine is done. Fifth com or fifth Nexus router is coming up as well. Disruptor transition. Darren has started producing a few Vikings here at once as well. Fleet Beacon comes up here for the Protoss player and another Stargate too. Fifth command center now also being built. So really, yeah, really passive game here so far from Soldo. In general, I feel like Terran benefits from being played a little bit more actively, especially against Protoss. I know it's difficult to push though, especially against shield batteries and stuff, but. The top level Terran players, like for example Maru and Clem, I see them dropping around the maps and yes, just being very obnoxious most of the time, trying to like spread the opponent very thinly. So there's a, uh, a medevac drop. I mean, it's it, I guess we have seen a couple of medevac drops coming up. So there's, by the way, the Thermal Lens upgrade finishing up. It's an expensive upgrade, so maybe maybe he like purposely delayed it, but I, I don't know. Anyways, I'll shut up about it now. Carrier number one being built. Scan over here though reveals exactly what's going on. So this is very nice here. For the Terran player, Protoss is trying to push in. Starts up a ton of additional command centers. Okay. So Sol looks at this. I mean, Sol is very fond of the games going the distance, right? In case you're unfamiliar, the man is not afraid to play macro games. Uh, he's like, okay, I see a bunch of units uh, being built on the other side of the map that are going to take a while to come out. Let me just add on four... No, that's a starport. But like four additional command centers at this stage in the game. Liberators. Ooh, sorry. Disruptors available too. Top left and corner now being acquired as well by Gung Fu. These meta effects barely even had to like fly anywhere. Finally, there's a big drop coming up. I mean, and we see the uh, the units lifted up and then landing pretty much half a second later. Storm is also being researched. Dark Templar Blink is coming up. Basically, Gung Fu is getting every upgrade right now. He's just looking at whatever he had and he's like, you know what, I'll just get all of the things. I've seen a video at some point a long time ago of Michael Jackson going shopping in like a grocery or, or like in a, in a shopping mall or whatever. And basically he just points at all of the things that he wanted, right? Apparently he wasn't particularly good with money, even though he made a lot of it, I'm sure. Um, either way, that's kind of what Gung Fu is doing right here as well. He's like, I want that, I want that, I want this one, I want that one as well, put it in the bag, I want this one. He's just getting, look at, <laughs> look at the production tab. He's just getting all of the stuff. <laughs> Maybe, maybe like one or two of you have seen that same video. Dark Templar moving on over to watch the base, and there's actually no detection over here. The ninjas, the invisible men, you guys can actually go in there. Alright, well, you guys won't apparently. There's a lot of marauders in this army. 16 marines as well, so I guess it's not, you know, the end of the world. One of the siege tanks there gets blown up. Uh, we're currently at eight Vikings and four are being produced at once. Tempest now also comes up here for Gung Fu. So it's like a mix between... Oh. <laughs> siege tank scan right there. Uh, reveals the, the Dark Templar, but then forces the siege tanks to kill their own buddy. 
Anyways, like splash damage is a real thing. Um, I I guess I guess he scouted here that it's gonna be like a semi Skytals transition because there's really only two Stargates producing stuff at this point. It's a very yeah, it's a really heavy ground army as well. So he's just gonna go with Vikings and apparently a tactical nuke. All right. Don't know about that Ghost Academy positioning, but fair enough. So we have a bunch of shield batteries coming up in a relatively random position, but this is usually like a staging ground, right? Like if you control this space, it's much easier to take the top left and corner of this map. Missile turrets are being built as well. All right. There's the fusion core coming up, the Terran fleet beacon. Okay, Vikings trying to get some work done over here. One of the Colossi dangerously low. Killing interceptors is nice, obviously. Oh, this is good. This is really good. Sol has decided to go for a big counterattack with the Marines and Marauders. I think he can even kill the Nexus if he targets it down. Nope, Protoss army is already back home, although he does, guess a, uh, he does get a Colossus. There's a little bit of RNG. There's the tactical nuke. There's a little bit of RNG when you recall units back to watch your base, because you don't know on what side they will spawn. They'll just order... Uh, oh, God. Hello. Is there no... De there's the... De okay, I was gonna say. Um, if you, uh, if you randomly recall, you don't know where the units are gonna pop, right? Behind and, and, you know, sometimes the Colossi can pop over here, and apparently in this case, it just popped right in the middle of that Terran army. Big hit. Gung Fu Balls of Strike as well. Very nice. So, big Tempest transition. I actually really like Tempest. I think Tempest are, uh... Underutilized for sure. Like, we see them a lot in uh, Terran versus Protoss as far as cheese goes, right? We see them being proxied on the other side of the map. But Tempests are legitimately good. They have a ton of range, especially for air to air. And I can't imagine against this, like, very heavy Viking army. So we're already up to 16 of these bad boys. Not a bad idea. Zealot's trying to run around. I think Sol needs to keep under pressure, though, because if you, if you blink twice, like, this, this Protoss player is going to take the entire map. So the tendency here for Terran is to sit back and try and just macro up, but I would love to see Medifex going towards the corners of the map and maybe... Well, this is going to be a difficult army to... Uh, yeah, that's... that's oh, God. That's not really an army you can face off against very easily. Tactical Nuke once again coming up. Um, we're at 21 Vikings. Base right here at the 3 o'clock also being acquired. Yeah, this is where the Tempest can be super nice, though. So, the high... Or, sorry, the Vision... So, here's the thing. Gung Fu Banda's Tempest can shoot further away than they can see, right? So, if you have the Watchtower over here, you can see much further, and therefore the Tempest can... The Tempest can shoot really far away. The in-control announcer, by the way. Always nice to hear Jeff's voice here for a little bit. Tactical nuke is done. Okay, storm comes up, gets one of the. Oh my god, that's a carrier piece right there. Look at that. It's like a piece of the golden armada floating across our screen. Huge storms here as well on the uh, the right side of the map. A couple dark templar here in the mix. Tactical nuke number two. What? <laughs> What's this even gonna do? Is this literally just a distraction nuke? I mean, you may as well try and get something. Yeah, so obviously Gung Fu, when he hears Tactical Nuke Detected, um... He, he's just gonna look around the map, frantically, right? Trying to find that red dot. And I, I, I guess that was the idea, to just distract him? Oh, once again, Vikings. Yep, you can get him. Force Field's not gonna do much, my man, against the Vikings. Okay, Storm. Just to, you know, force this player to back off. Planetary Fortress will stay alive. Bottom right corner at this point is done. This is a Skytals army, but it's not like a Skytals Skytals army, you know what I mean? Like, it's more ground units than Skytals for sure. So it's it's important not to get too carried away on the Viking count either. As a matter of fact, okay, Terran has started producing a... Battle cruiser operation. Well, not yet. Almost operational. <laughs> Trying to land the EMP as well, I guess. Okay, that's one of the carriers going down. Second carrier going down. Third carrier very low in hit points, and it gets picked off. Nice moves right there by Sol. Very important moves as well. 
We have the uh, research coming up in the fusion core as well for the battlecruiser Yamato cannon upgrade. They upgraded it from a, a gun to a cannon once upon a time. Although I still like the sound of Yamato gun. There's something cool about the word Yamato uh, I don't know. I'm probably the only one. I think Yamato gun is kind of nice. That's what they called it in StarCraft 1. <laughs> the Dark Templar train has arrived. Moving on over to watch the Planetary Fortress. Now, there is detection here, but the Planetary is having a hard time keeping this base up by itself. Battlecruiser shows up, and I think a lot of the DTs will not live to tell this still, but they kill a couple of ghosts also on their way out. At the same time, in the top section of the map, a huge army over here is taking a lot of damage. Most of the Vikings get picked off, but I don't really see any flying Protoss units anymore. Yep, at this point, literally all of the Skytools units have been picked off. 25 SCVs end up dying on this expansion, but also the one at the, the 3 o'clock. Two nukes being researched. Okay, one inside of the main base. It's done. Here come the Purification Novas, just to force this Terran player to back off for even longer. Command Center! Is it gonna get picked off? It will! Yamato cannons, though, being utilized here as well by these battle cruisers. And all of a sudden, if you look at the map right now, Gung Fu takes a dominating lead. The, the supply count can be a little bit deceiving, because he does have four Tempest and, like, a bunch of units in production. So those units obviously aren't done yet, and they take forever, but I guess the same can be said right now for Sol, who decided to drop his piggy bank right here on a couple additional BCs. The Protoss ground army, though, still continues onwards. Oh my god, is he gonna just kill this? Oh, yeah, Purification Novas, they deal damage right there. That's one of the units cancelled. Second unit right here is also gonna end up getting cancelled. Couple of BCs, though, decide to jump on top of this army. Yamato cannons coming up, one of the disruptors gets picked off. Sol was already running with the rest of his force. At the same time, a few zealots apparently have made their way on over towards the third base of the Terran player. Well, that one is pretty much mined out. Don't even know how they got there. I guess they just walked past the planetary. Gung Fu in the meantime, though, continues expanding all over the map. And I love this, man. Like, he's playing Protoss like he's a Zerk. He's literally taking every single base on his side of the map. Four Tempest being researched. Plus three is coming up as well for Saw for the big flying boys. Makes him deal a ton of damage. Uh, I'm starting to be a little bit concerned, though, primarily here for the eco here of Saw. Like, Saw is behind in... in in army, but also in eco. Tactical nuke being used to try and defend the third base, or I guess this is the fourth. If he can land the nuke, that would be really good for him. Here's the ghost that's cast, oh, casting it. All right. If he gets killed while channeling, the nuke magically disappears. Oh, second one, heading on over towards this base. Is this something that Gung Fu is gonna pick up on? I'm not entirely sure. At the very least, he's gonna be able to kill the fourth CC from the Terran player. This nuke will land. Okay, so that's a lot of probes that end up going down at the same time. Bottom right in corner. Nice splits right there by Soul, but there's enough static defense to force this army to back off. While this is happening, though, okay, he does snipe the disruptor before it can explode. Soul takes a good fight over here, although the storms here are relentless. A lot of Tempest here. There's still a lot of Tempest here. They're picking off whatever unit they can from a distance. All of a sudden, Gung Fu supply. It's not looking so hot anymore. Well, I said that, and then he warped in. What was that? 17 zealots? Did I just see 17 zealots on the production tab? <laughs> the man just, uh, yeah, took a hammer to the piggy bank and decided to warp in 2,000 minerals worth of zealots. Still has quite a lot remaining, though. Yeah, he's been investing in a lot of expansions, right? Another orbital command. Well, okay, we'll get picked off. I was going to say it's going to burn down, but... It gets picked off. I mean, as a matter of fact, right now, Gung Fu doesn't have enough probes to mine all of his mineral patches. Like, he's <laughs> he's got another couple bases here that, you know, haven't really been harassed. One huge observer over here as well scouts exactly what's going on. It sees exactly what's happening here and where the Terran army is located, so... Scan over there also reveals the position of the main Protoss army. But this doesn't really... I don't know, this doesn't really... Qualify as Skytals per se, right? It's it's kind of Skytals. It's kind of Sky Terran. I mean, at this point, there's a lot of Tempest, I guess, but it's not been both players maxed out on uh, on flying units, and I think that makes a lot of sense because flying units just by themselves, I mean, it can be good, but 
This is a whole lot better. It's just so immobile, you know? Still a huge bio bowl here, though, for the Terran player. I mean, in a straight up battle, the Tempest will definitely get sniped. A couple high Templar, where is he recalling to? He just recalled. Okay, he recalled to the main base. There's a couple of storms available. Ooh. The Weatherman expected this. EMPs go down as well. There's really not that much remaining here in the forms of splash damage, but those storms. The amount of splash damage he had, it was just barely enough. And since Soul is running out of money and Gung Fu still has most of the map under his control, Soul is forced to GG out. And with that, it's going to be our Protoss player from Germany that obtains the victory. I hope you enjoyed watching today's YouTube video. In case you're unfamiliar, I upload to this YouTube channel pretty much every single day. You can also check out my second YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash moreloco, which is where I post completed games that I've streamed on Twitch. Currently, my Mass Effect playthrough is going up over there. So go ahead and have a look. Link is down below in the description of this video. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to smile. And I'll see you once again in the next one.